I swear I'm a film critic. Hello, movie people. Welcome to a new episode of The Cine Guy. I'm your host, Steven Angulo. Let's talk film. Now, I am excited because there ha- there is a new one that just came out. And, oh my gosh, there's just so much to expect. There's going to be adventure and, you know, peril, fantasy aspects. Some CGI, I suppose, and best of all, it's going to have Robert Downey Jr. in it. Oh, what's it going to be? What's it going to be? What's it going to be? Doolittle. Huh. So, now that Iron Man is dead, that better not be a spoiler. You should have seen this movie by now. Robert Downey Jr. needs a job. So, what does he do? He goes for another British character in a remake of another movie. From the 2000s, I'm sorry, the 90s, played by Eddie Murphy, which was in fact a reimagining of a different movie that came out in the 60s, based off a book from the 20s. So in a way, this movie is more of like a, a reboot of the 60s movie that follows the book from the 20s. Now, when this film was announced, we got excited because it's Robert Downey Jr. He he doesn't, you know, he knows how to deliver performance. He doesn't know how to disappoint. However, with this movie, <laughs> we got excited because, you know, we got to see uh, Robert again. But, man, the execution, this film, like the annoying animals in it, should have been put down. And I can say that because there were no real animals. It was all CGI. Because somebody decided, you know what will make this movie great? And we made it extremely family-oriented and focusing more on computer graphics. And what do we get? Let's see. A a very long mess of a film that focuses too much on the, you know, cartoon animals. And very little on the story. Oh my gosh. Hmm, let's see. British, uh, CGI animals, humor only meant for children, and maybe a little inappropriate for adults, and so to say. So yeah, this film is pretty much Paddington was made by Nickelodeon. Or if the Chipmunk movies were produced by the BBC. So you can t- you can see where they went wrong here. I mean, there was just so much potential. They had just gone with the, you know, fantasy adventure route instead of, you know, thinking about the kids. Oh, the kids. Honestly, kids movies are more than just fart jokes and, you know, grown men saying, Oh, uh toilet so the story has dr doolittle who years after his wife died he comes out of hiding after closing his doors to treat the queen of england who is now ill with a rare disease that can only be cured by a mysterious fruit that can be found on an island that nobody has found before yeah i know it's complicated but then again it's a movie about a guy who talks to animals it's supposed to be fun right I mean, there's just so much potential there. Like, okay, this could generate a, gi- a great story and such an uh, amazing adventure movie. But what went wrong? I mean, there was a bunch of CGI animals. So what's wrong with that? I'll tell you what's wrong with that. These animals, oh my gosh. They were pretty much all Jar Jar Binks. Uh, CGI. Um, a lot of them... Ha- are recognized because of their voices and they all fought to be the comic relief so i see we got a gorilla who took the formula out of the good dinosaur by being scared of everything like a little sorry i just really hate that movie good dinosaur yeah you probably already know this he's voiced by rami malik and I guess he's got like a, he's scared. Of, yeah, he's scared of everything pretty much. Everything's like, oh, he's got like anxiety all the time. He's always nervous. He thinks he's going to fail you. And like, I don't know, like he did have kind of potential because based on the little like introduction, he came from warfare. He was captured by poachers and rescued by, you know, Dr. Doolittle. So he could have had a great, you know, storyline in which he could have developed from like, you know, a person who can't trust anything to, you know, somebody who, you know, opens up and can actually, you know, accept that the world is not a dark place. But no, 
This was just an excuse to scream at the screen and make your kid laugh. So you see what a waste, wasted potential that was. A polar bear that's always cold, voiced by John Cena. Huh. You know, if global warming was a thing back then, that polar bear would be very happy. An ostrich, voiced by Kumail Nanjiani. But let's face it, we just, they just did it for his accent. We love to laugh at it. A duck voiced by Octavia Spencer doing her perfect Tiffany Hash impression. I'm telling ya. This this was way below Octavia Spencer, alright? She was all uh, I thought it was Tiffany Haddish at first because of the you know the voice and everything, but like No. If that's the voice you wanted to, why didn't you get Tiffany Haddish? She can do voiceovers. My gosh. A squirrel voiced by Craig Robinson, that even though they're in Britain. The voice came straight from the ghetto. Honestly, it had it, it was it had gangster voice. It was all like from the hood and everything. Like nobody wants, you know, a hood squirrel in a fantasy British movie. Whose idea was that? The only smart animal in the movie was the parrot voiced by Emma Thompson. She played more as more like a a voice of reason for Doctor Doolittle. Like, she was there, like, you know, keep him going, like, hey, come on, man. The world isn't that a big, scary place. You got to go back out there. You got to show the world who you really are. Like, if each animal had that sort of, you know, that sort of unique uniqueness to themselves, or at least developed as a character, this movie might have been, you know, more enjoyable. Like, we don't have to relate to them, but maybe some of them could be relatable like that gorilla we all feel anxious and scared of the world because you know we've been through certain circumstances that lead us to not trust it anymore but why do you have to be such a little you know why to be scared of everything like that like honestly and the way he uh, he just he decided you know what i have i do have potential it was weak also there's a dragon in there for some reason i don't know fantasy i guess you gotta have a dragon only difference is there's no blonde lady to help control them. I had to do a Game of Thrones reference there because why is there a dragon in Doctor Doolittle? So yeah, it's not Jungle Book level amazing with the CGI animals. I mean, I'm guessing they're better off doing like you know voiceovers like in Homeward Bound. You don't see their lips move, but I guess it's for the kids, right? I mean, they want to see John Cena polar bear. Now, Dr. Doolittle could have had an amazing backstory. I mean, trying to, you know, get through the, the death of his wife and everything. He, you know, becomes a hermit and just pushes, pushes the, the world away like, oh, I lost everything. Why do I need the, you know, why do I need anything else? I've got my animals. They're the only ones I can trust because I'm, I'm the only one who can speak to them. But like, no, when we see him, it's not like a, a broken man. No, we saw a, psych, a psychotic... A psychotic bearded guy who was just overacting the whole time. That's not what I want to see. I mean, we were better off with like if Doctor Doolittle was like an alcoholic. Like maybe the talking the animals was an effect of the alcohol or something. But then we realize, oh, he's got this actual gift. It's not. It's not BS. It's real. That could have been an interesting route to take. Not really kid friendly, but it still would have made a much more interesting film. But no, he's ecstatic. I mean, it's just too much. I felt like I paid Robert to like be a clown at my child's birthday party. Only he didn't have the makeup on. It's just I don't know. It was just way too much. And like, uh, this this was bad direction right here. This cannot be the character Doctor Doolittle. No. And of course we've got kid protagonists because kids want to be the hero, I guess. So we got a young boy who. You know, wants to learn how to communicate with the animals as well. He wants to work with Dr. Doolittle. And he could have had a good backstory too, like trying to, you know, overcome violence after he accidentally shot the squirrel, the gangster squirrel. So yeah, he could be all against weapons and everything and like, you know, be nurturing to animals. That would have been a good path. But no, he's just there. He doesn't really do much for the story. He doesn't really develop that well. Like... That was pretty much if the Alvin and Chipmunks movie had a random kid in it. That was the movie that they gave me. There's also a kid princess who you only see her in the beginning and the, in the end. That's it. She she did not do anything for the story whatsoever. It would have been great if, like, you know, she joined the 
the adventure maybe show her you know like hey i may be a girl print i might be a girl in royalty but i can still do all this stuff maybe she's more athletic than do little do little or the boy that would have been great right there but no we just have a a little girl playing dress up and doing nothing for the story i mean if she had gone with the avenger that would have developed her relationship with the boy you know they could have grown as characters and gone to know each other now I'm more like, hey, hey, you brought the fruit. Uh, here's have a kiss in the cheek. I guess we're a couple now. Wait a minute. A once famous businessman who closes his doors and it takes children to open them back up to the world? Is this a remake of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? But with talking animals? Now that you mentioned, I will not have minded if the polar bear and the ostrich sang a song while like one of the kids, like, I don't know, fell to their death or something. <laughs> <laughs> There's your remake right there. Oh, man. You know, this would be a ter completely different movie if Tim Burton directed it. Wasn't he available? Come on, guys. This would have been a great film. Who doesn't want to see Do Robert Downey Jr. as a golf doctor? Like, we want to see emo and, you know, dark and scary Robert Downey Jr. Eh, knowing Tim, he would have casted uh, Johnny Depp as, you know as the doctor and Helena Bonham Carter would have been the queen. Also, the way he spoke to animals, like there was no like mystery or magic to it. It was just Dulur could just understand them because he spoke their language. He was like to the girl, he was like, ooh, ooh, chee, 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 chee. to the bird, tweet, 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 tweet. like, no. And then like, of course, the animals gonna speak English to him because they, that way we can understand, we can understand them. But like, it kind of disrupts the magic of like the fantasy of everything. Like this is supposed to be like his gift, kind of like in the first Doctor Doolittle with uh, Eddie Murphy. We don't know how he got it. Was he born with it? Did he like? Did it come to him out of nowhere? Like that would have made a bit. That would have been you know more interesting. And now the boy knows how to talk to them because he's learning. Like no, I I rather have it like maybe like the boy doesn't understand a word the animals are saying. So he conveys with Dr. Doolittle to, like, you know, understand them. And maybe, like, the fruit, he takes a bite of it, and now he can talk to animals. And there's the magic of it. What happened to this movie? Even the villain was a kiss movie cliche. Michael Sheen played a rival doctor who had the most sinister beard and mustache. He could not have looked ev any more evil. Like, this was a cartoon character in, like, a, a Looney Tunes movie. He didn't really do anything for the story. He was just there. He wasn't that much of an antagonist. He was more like, "Haha, Doctor Doolittle, I blew up your ship, uh, and I'm gonna look. F I'm gonna look for the island first, so I can keep you from saving the queen." Oh well, goodbye. That's it. I mean, at least try capture the guy and take him to the i take him to the island, and then m notice that like you know, the riches and like you know the mystery of this island corrupts the human will. And only Robert Downey Jr. and his crew are the ones that survive. Well, you could have executed a much, much better movie with this, you know, with this scenario. Like, simple, just take away the humor, focus more on character development, and maybe make the animals a little less, you know, kooky. And you would have had an actually interesting fantasy movie that would have made a great character for Robert Downey Jr. It would have made us, you know, see that he could do so much more. But no, this movie made me crave more Iron Man. And if you want a British Robert Downey Jr., give me my third Sherlock Holmes movie. Come on. So my final rating is 4.9 pieces of celery out of 10 bad uses for Antonio Banderas. And don't get me started on the Ray Fiennes Tiger, who had mommy issues rather than be like one of the antagonists. <sighs> Well, that was quite the expedition. We did not find what we were looking for, and I honestly kind of wish there was an arc where if I opened it, my face will melt off. Ah, well. I guess if you want an actual good movie to watch this month, your best bet is Bad Boys 3. That's all I'm going to say. Alright, guys, hope you enjoyed this review. Leave a like if you did, subscribe and enjoy the crew, and I'll see you next time for another awesome review. Also, do follow the Instagram page at CineGuySteven for more fun reviews. This is Steven and Gulo signing off.
That is my monkey impression saying you're better off watching Bad Boys 3 this month. Like, take the kids. You'll spare them with this nonsense. That's a wrap.